did you always see yourself pursuing engineering or engineering managing or was that something that arose later in your life? Oh, no, it was super random and arose later in life. Um, I think I had in my mind that I definitely wanted to be like an artist or an architect. Actually, I had no idea what I wanted to be when I was applying to school. I think I applied to like seven different schools with like seven different majors. Um, I think I had just picked computer science randomly because in high school, I had entered like a robotics competition. Like robotics is just like one of the science electives. So I'm like, great. I, uh, all the science classes are super boring. Robotics sounds really fun. And then um, I had like won a Lego robotic, robotics competition which was kind of sick, uh, but writing the code for it was really fun. So I was like, oh, I'll try computer science. Though to be fair, my dad is a computer scientist and he always taught me how to use a computer, but nothing about coding at all and did not encourage me to go down this path. So he was like happy, but a little surprised. And I was like, yeah, let's just see how it goes. <laughs> I do some coding in school and it's really, really hard. And, and it's also frustrating. Yeah, it's also not taught well in a bunch of different places. I feel like people make it, especially intro courses, people make them so dry and boring. They're like, this is how you make a calculator. Um, I think actually the first time I, I actually did write code, I was pretty young. It was like 11 and it was me pets.com. Uh, I think that's probably like earlier than most people, but it was kind of early internet. So they sort of let you do whatever you want. And so it was like this Pokemon app that was on the website and like everyone my age played, like all of the girls. And part of the game was like each of your pets could have like your own page. And the page is just like an open HTML box. So they had like a really good JavaScript and HTML and CSS tutorial. So you could like build these custom web pages. It made it like really fun and you were incentivized to figure it out. So your page would be the coolest. <laughs> and I think like that was was really engaging in a way that my computer science 101 class like I just wanted to like fall asleep it was awful <laughs> they were like let's uh, figure out how to do a tip calculator I'm like why would I want this it's so dry that website sounds cool I remember my first experience with coding was scratch but it wasn't it wasn't writing code it was you know like block coding I think it was a nice soft introduction as opposed to something like making a calculator but Thing people don't really think about coding is that it's more of um like a tool in the toolbox it's like being good at sculpting or painting and it's almost a skill you have but what's important is like the end product so the end product is not interesting or it's not something you want like why would you master this skill to get there uh and i think that's like a lot of the gap in when people are picking it up and like given these like super boring things to do <laughs> Do you have a specific experience or a moment when you first realized that you wanted to go into engineering? Because, I mean, you said that it wasn't until, you know, college that you realized or after college. But do you have a moment when you realized that, okay, this is what I want to do? Yeah, so I would say I like... I, so I majored, I did a double major in college in computer science and art. And by the end of college, I was like, oh no, I've made a horrible mistake. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is like really soul sucking. And I don't like any of like the people that I'm like hanging out with that I'm not super interested. Um, so I'm going to try to be an artist. So I think right after school, I worked for, it was sort of Carnegie Mellon's like knockoff equivalent of the, like the, oh, I forget what it's called at MIT. It's like the Creative Institute or like whatever their creative coding program was. Um, and to be honest, I, I really enjoyed that. I think um, I touched on this a little bit in college, but there's a lot of things that um, even like concepts in math, I didn't really understand until I started coding them. So one of them was like graphics and particle systems was like my specialty where you would kind of code particle systems, which is sort of like if you think of movies and you've ever seen like birds flying around in flocks, or even like um, when you see like a villain like break up into a bunch of dust motes, like that's all code, right? And those are usually particle systems. So you have some sort of computer program that's like mimicking how those particles interact in real life. Uh, and you're sort of creating this like really beautiful generative visual at the end. So until I started, started writing those, I didn't really understand physics or really coding it well that well either and then everything just sort of clicked um, where you kind of have like a single object which is the particle itself and you're like cool what are the rules that apply to this object and you're like well as soon as it gets close to another object it wants to like push away and like it has a direction that it wants to go but it's like influenced by like the particles around it and so that's one and then you iterate over them to kind of manipulate the whole swarm and I think that like that visual representation one, I didn't understand why I was learning physics and all these kind of rote boring things I was memorizing up until then, where it, it suddenly was like, oh, yeah, all this stuff that I was kind of memorizing in a textbook makes sense. And I'm applying it to do this really cool thing I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. And then um, the end result was like really cool and beautiful. And I was like, oh, I, I like this. Like I could keep doing this. That was like really fun and like an interesting thing to do. Yeah, that's awesome. That's also a cool way to blend art with coding and with, you know, yeah. technology. Yeah. It's like, it's cool. Also, like, it's almost like developing like a deeper understanding of how like the physical world works. Because yeah. since you're trying to model it virtually, you have to understand all these things. You're like, oh, well, you know, there's like, there's gravity, there's like velocity, uh, you know, there's like how like the light emits from the particle and how it goes together. And 
you know, I think paying attention to those things too and like building understanding is also like a cool way to, you know, spend some of your time while you're alive. Did you have a mentor in STEM growing up or even now? And if so, when did that mentor enter your life? And you advise young girls who are interested in STEM to find mentors? Yeah. So I would say I did not have a mentor to probably like this job at Quintus, which is like pretty late in my career, which is like a little wild. Um, but yeah, I think if you, they're absolutely essential. I didn't know this either when I was younger, um, but engineering is really sort of like an apprenticeship profession. Sort of back in the day when you're like, oh, I want to be like a master woodcutter. So your parents would just go like send you to apprentice. I actually, woodcutter is not a job. Like a sculptor maybe and they would just go send you to train with someone who's already good at it uh to like learn uh engineering is much of the same way where you learn fundamentals in school but all of the details of your job you pick up on the job and you kind of need someone who's like willing to teach you uh i would say i when I was younger, I was the only woman in my program. So I had like a chip on my shoulder and like somebody to prove. And I'm like, ah, I'm going to figure this out on my own. And it's going to be so much better than the rest of you. And like, uh, it's like, <laughs> like, I don't need to ask for help because I'm the only girl in the class. And that was like really my mentality throughout school and like my first job too. And it wasn't until like my second job and this job where I was like, oh no. Also it helped in both of those worlds. There are other women in the space. So it wasn't just like me alone with a bunch of nerds who were being like rude to me. <laughs> But um, yeah, like how valuable it is just to get someone else's like perspective and like also feedback of like what you're, you could be doing better is absolutely invaluable. So at my current job, especially once I switch to managers, I have I'm a mentor named like Anisha, who's excellent. She's so talented, but she's the one I actually get like a lot of feedback and advice from. And um, I've gotten so much better because of it than I did when I was just like grinding on my own, trying to <laughs> figure things out <laughs> and prove something. <laughs> I think it's definitely important to know that, you know, sometimes it's fine to ask for help and stuff. Because yeah. honestly, getting help can, you know, expedite a process if, instead of being stuck and refusing to ask anyone for anything. Yeah, you're completely right. And I think in school too, like when you're doing tests and like homework, there's like something to prove by being able to master it yourself. But once you're in the workplace, like no, like you just have to do your job. You can do your job any way you want. And if you are spending, burning a day, like trying to figure something else that you could have asked someone and gotten unblocked in five minutes, like you're doing the wrong thing actually because you're wasting time. <laughs>